Hello guys. Okay, starting from few updates. So yeah, last video was the ice fishing video. Unfortunately, lack of success. We went uh, for the weekend to to different uh, district. My friend owns a little private lake in the in the forest. We were hoping that the ice uh, will be strong enough because there was like 15 degrees centigrade minus a few nights in a row we went on the ice unfortunately it wasn't uh, not a chance to even like little poke with the with the feet and it broke immediately so obviously not even thinking about about the ice fishing we went uh, trout fishing during the day it was minus five degree i put a short clip i managed to catch one uh, brown trout tiny one 20 centimeters something like that little clip i'm putting right now and then uh, another update this week disaster happened so we might be we might be delayed with the popper video this one that you that you just watching i hope i'll be able to update according to the schedule on saturday again the ice fishing video was updated in the night on uh, from sunday to monday again because on saturday we were trying this ice fishing then we were hoping will be a little bit better the next day again sunday we went we tried the ice still nothing therefore the video was uh, uploaded so late uh, this one I hope fingers crossed I might make it but I put again short clip here what's happened in the basement in my dungeon in my workshop whichever way you want to call it so yeah enjoy <laughs> see disaster two days without the running water the plumbers came today in the morning they dig in the in the ceiling a lot of bricks uh, water everywhere i'm actually i'm gonna show you sitting here in my wellington boots because there is still wet carpet from all this uh, all this flooding that happened and you might hear some dripping noises from uh, from there as well fortunately they fix it today is first day now already afternoon when i were when i was done with cleaning of all the mess and i'm finally able to start uh, making the lures but i have only two hours right now and then hopefully on Friday I'll be able to finish the usual first stage of shaping, weighting, uh, epoxing, sealing uh, the lure. So maybe we're gonna do water test, swim test on Saturday morning and the usual editing I'll do on Saturday morning. So around afternoon Saturday European time the video should be uploaded. Fingers crossed guys that will happen. Okay so that's it for the update sorry to make it a little bit long but again funny things happen uh, this week without further ado that's what we're gonna create today we turn this into this so guys of course this is not something that is sustainable if you want to get into making poppers on the bigger scale because it's obviously you're buying a paintbrush you don't pay for this little piece of wood it costs some money but then again as you saw in my zender making uh, balsamino i'm using all the time this part of the paintbrush to make my little disposable brushes for the epoxy painting so for me this is basically gratis and this is what i'm gonna use uh, to make the uh, to make our popper again if you don't have a lathe i would say this is the best way to go about it because basically 
your lure blank is already shaped you have a nice cap on this side or on this side i was thinking if to do maybe one like longer popper utilize this part to put the eye here and make a popper cap here and do it the longer one like till here or i could just do the way that i did this one before so like that cutting this cutting the screw then uh, cutting this part around here and doing the shorter popper i'm not so sure about the action of the pencil popper so i guess i will go with this one as i know it's working it's it's popping nicely so we go like that so now i'm flipping the camera and i'm gonna go about it i will do it slightly differently than this popper here i did cut the slot along to put the through wire but it was a lot of hassle uh, especially this i'm not used to bending this 1.2 millimeter wire you know twitch baits little zender baits i'm using uh, thinner stuff this one is rather uh, hard to work with so this one i'm gonna do the drill along method and then drill the hole for the bottom bottom hook hanger so yeah flipping the camera and let's go with the flow <laughs> Next thing to do is to mark the center So basically I want to chamfer this to that point and I want to start from, let's say, roughly here. I do this. I will use my harder wood carving knife. This is Alpha. And this is in order not to get the, not to get the blisters. This and keep. Oh my god, it's again so hard. Wood, you would imagine that you know they'll do it from like whatever rubbish wood. It's a dispenser, like probably pine, something like that, but it's definitely some some hardwood guys anyone knows about the wood like is there any carpenter there please let me know in the comment box which kind of wood do you think it is Okay guys, we're roughly there. So the next thing that I'm doing is now check where's the natural heavy point of the lure. Okay, and this is the mark that I put. Guys, let's trace it. It is here. Now I'm tracing it. Towards the front. And... 
along the bottom and we know that our bottom hole should be somewhere around here first of all six millimeter drill and we're gonna mark the hole in the center Perhaps this is enough. Now we're gonna swap the drill for the biggest one that I have, which is 10 millimeters, the thicker hole in the center. And so this is how much of the cup you were able to create it just with the drill. And now you would thought this kind of bit would be ideal to finish the job. But here you're wrong. It really takes ages to bore the, the, the correct size of the cup using this. As you can see, that was my attempt on the previous popper. It's absolutely insufficient. So what I find out is the best way to use just the regular sandpaper bead and I will show you in details how to use it to make nice and symmetrical cup. Okay guys, our popper, sorry mask. So yeah, the cap of our popper is done. Nice and smooth already. No need for any final sanding. Once the epoxy coat will come, it will be completely smooth. Now, it will sand a little bit this part. Okay guys, we're all sanded. So basically we're having our popper blank and how long that took us? 40 minutes. So, well, obviously that is a shorter to do it on a lathe if you have one, but if you don't have one, 40 minutes to the naked blank, that is in my opinion, not too bad. Definitely you wouldn't reach this stage if you would start it from the square block of wood. So this uh, tooth, toothbrush, <laughs> this uh, paintbrush handle idea, it's uh, fairly, fairly, well, I say usable. At least if you want to try, if you get into it and you get the results and you're happy to use it. For me, you know, guys, I gonna use these poppers once a year maybe twice a year on the tropical holiday. Normally they could be useful for pike, but I don't really have any pike venues around. So I'm not using them in the fresh water at all. And as I said, uh, access to the salt water, I have only during the holidays. So yeah, let's go with the drilling. This is the new method for me. As I said, last time I did the belly slot. Now we're gonna do the through drilling with the long drill bit. This guys is the longest drill bit that I'm having. And the actual length is eight and a half centimeters. The total length of the lure 
So unfortunately, I won't be able to do it with one go. I'll just drill slightly past the half and then again from the back past the half. And I do hope those uh, holes will meet so we will be able to thread our wire through. I'm gonna do some pilot hole by hand. Okay guys, the moment of truth, the thick wire, 1.2 millimeter, let's make it nice and straight. Okay guys, success. Okay guys, with number 5, we're going bottom. And slightly past. The first time this method I've seen on the Murray uh, Grab a fishing channel, you know, the corn no blues guy. So, all credit to him, that's not my invention. So, yeah, I'm gonna pick it, pick it up his brain and use it the same way. Now, that's the way I show you the way how I do my he does the twisted wire. Twisted wire is strong, but not as strong as the high wire, as engineered angler. Uh, tested in one of his videos so what we're gonna do is to do the high wire and that's how i do it this kind of clipping pincers whatever way you call them i'm snapping them slightly slightly above keeping it in my vise and now turning it once it's enough you already broke here but this what it is it is a high wire and that is definitely strong than the wire that is twisted just around okay, managed to create it as you can see something like that it's like super strong and from 1.2 millimeter wire oh my god that was an easy task to do it but I do need to enlarge the hole in order to fit it in. So this is five millimeters. I'm gonna do it. Now it should fit much nicer. So as you can see, this goes like that. Comes the wire from the back. We go, goes through or not. Okay, so it is slightly to the side, not exactly centered. So, what we know, we must put it. Now we're on guys, now we're hooked on and as the Murray crab said, that ain't going nowhere, especially that this will get the solid dose of the 
super glue and baking soda, which is one of the hardest substances in universe. No, probably not, but it is hard. Is it probably no? Okay, guys, bending the wire now. Okay, guys, we have a nice loop. Make it nice and straight. Nice and snug feet. <sighs> and we have it nicely centered with the bottom hook hanger. There you have it guys, this is now as solid as a rock. Same thing we're gonna do with this hole. So here we're not getting any twists. Again, I'll get back to you once I'm done with it because the angle will be really funny so you're not gonna see much anyway. Okay guys, so we're done with it. It's nice and smooth, still slightly wet. I also already sealed it, the cup with the super glue. Here we are cool as well. I'm just gonna send it a little bit, but we're running out of time slightly. So I just wanted to show you the last part. I mean, of course, for today, not for the video. The last part of the of the build, but before we do that we also gonna make sure that here the wire coming out straight so even this little hole we're gonna fill in with the super glue and baking soda that's again off camera so also this part is done so now we're gonna do it as i learned from some video tutorial first we're bending it 45 degrees up like so little gap here this where our coils will go okay rubbing it super hard flipping it backwards on its own one moment to disturb the like so so grabbing it with this pliers and twisting them several times like so Okay guys, so that's how it looks. I'm just gonna grind it, this sharp edge a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, like so. Now it's nice and flush. And all of this, I'm epoxying. You see on the old lure, the wire was here as well. All of that, I epoxy it and actually paint it. So I'm sure it's definitely not gonna unravel on me. And the same thing gonna be here. You see the eye I did a little bit bigger, but not, never mind. So yeah guys, that is a finished product basically in terms of the naked blank. Now we go with the epoxy. So guys, as you can see, the lure blank is now white. That's because I added again this titanium dioxide into my epoxy. It's used as a white pigment for epoxy. So of course, uh, after we got all the properties of epoxy, but the lure blank is basically already white. So you're not gonna struggle that much after and not gonna waste that much of a white primer while painting the lure. So guys, popper for now looks like that. It is still full of bubbles, this and that, but it's completely sealed and kind of whitish. So this is our goal uh, for today is to weigh it. This is the hardware that I selected for this lure. I have number one salt water graded treble with a 30 kilo rated split ring and one, a two odd single mustard hook with again 30 kilo split ring for the back of the lure. We'll see uh, if it can carry that much weight and this is uh, sufficient strength for as I said as I'll be never fishing more than 10 kilo of drag so this is rather baby GT maybe some uh, Malloway, some Mac Tuna small ones shore fishing basically during the holiday uh, popper so I don't go crazy full power like you would go for the real size GT or, or tuna. So hopefully it can carry this much weight. Of course, we'll be testing it in the fresh water. In the salt water, it can carry more because it is more uh, buoyant, uh, the lure in the salt water. So let's hope uh, with the uh, split rings, that would be the only thing that I would upgrade maybe to the, to the bigger size when I go for the salt water. But as I said, there will be a difference in the buoyancy in here in the tank test and the salt water. So uh, the bigger split rings uh, won't make an issue later on during the real fishing. So now I will just put the, put the uh, hardware and let's see in the tank uh, how, it, uh, how it sits in the water and how much weight we still need to add it. Uh, to make it uh, looking like it should and of course uh, work the way that it should as well. Uh, one more thing, the total weight of the hardware is exactly 3 grams. So let's see how it behaves with that weight. Okay guys, so I'm hoping I'll be able to place those two uh, shots this is a steel, it's not that heavy, same one as I used to weight my Zender Mino. And I'm hoping I can place two of them still on the belly towards the back of the lure. And this time we're not going to be sticking it with the super glue because it's very roundish, so that would be difficult. I'll show you alternative method, which is just sticking them one next to each other on the tape. And now I will place the tape exactly on the bottom of my lure. Roughly first, now I will tweak it and actually it comes out exactly where I want it. So in line with the bottom hook hanger. And I think more, more or less in this spot it should give us the right right profile of the lure in the water. Now I need to put like that for all the 
air to disappear. No, I could go a little bit backward. So we're just gonna adjust it by simply unglue it from here and gluing it more towards the back of the lure making sure that it is still in line sorry, with the center of the of the lure like so and i would say that this is already might actually be able to add the third okay I added just roughly into the back here let's hope it stays there oh yeah now we are into something this is actually how I wanted to sit let me put you lower so you'll see Look at that guys, so it sits like that. So I have a 4 mil drill bit as I don't have a half and then I will enlarge the hole slightly with the Dremel bit. So let's start with the drilling. holes drilled let's place the weights like so nice inline in where they should be by applying super glue Okay, part A, add part B. Not much, like so, and mix it fairly. Okay, guys. Uh, sorry, I'm putting a mask because once I be sending it, the, of course you don't want to inhale this terrible powder. So without much talking, quick montage, su su su, sendu sendu, nice and flat. guys before we finish this episode before the final layer of epoxy i want to apply the base white color and then the final epoxy i mean final the final for this stage regular transparent one so i'm sure that i have the best finish before painting the lure uh, for the next week episodes so i will just do the quick montage of painting the white color and uh, if the eyes let go there will be the swimming action uh, in the end of this part of the video if not then i will color the lure first and the swimming action with the fully colored lure one more thing i wanted to ask you which i also gonna test it who actually managed to watch till the end please uh, drop in the comment which uh, sort of uh, salt water pattern would you like me to paint this popper because i have pretty much no any ready idea drop down your ideas i will pick the most uh, common one or maybe the one that i'm interested the most uh, challenging myself uh, painting it also uh, applying the aluminium foil it's fine you can you can mention that add the aluminium foil then paint this and this pattern or 
just simply the pattern that would include uh, the colors only. Okay guys, sorry, I don't know how it's gonna be with the audio because it's rather windy, the street behind me and I'm wearing a mask uh, due to the silly situation so popper is tested I added in front the usual mount however with a tiny swivel and 30 kilo rated split ring change the hook on the back for one odd mustard instead of two odd and still it's barely floating again as i mentioned this is fresh water so in the salt water will be different so in the fresh water basically what we have it's a diving popper it does really good the action is awesome the pop is also very good you can manipulate it either way you want to go under with the bubble trail or if you do like a short jack it does the loud pop and spits the water Thank you very much for watching, subscribe to the channel if you like, I actually want to share some exciting news for me, uh, the handmade fisherman Paul Adams and Solar Baits recently subscribed to my channel this week, so I believe the content uh, must be alright, I'm really appreciating uh, especially the Solar Baits as it was his videos that motivate me to start making my own lures. So yeah guys, if you enjoy the videos, please subscribe as well and press this like button and remember to comment about the lure pattern. That's it for this week's episode. I see you next Saturday. Stay safe and take care.